Land of the Milking Nomads. <laughs> Hello, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel, or to the channel if you're new. I do some pretty mad shit on this channel, but... Oh, that's worrying now. By and large, it's a channel that was built on geography. I've been fascinated by geography since I was a little kid. Maps, atlases, capital cities, flags. And it's about bloody time that I made a video like this. This is just basically me scrolling through map porn on Reddit, appreciating some incredible maps. This idea is unashamedly stolen from uh, Jack Sucks at Life or Jack Sucks at Geography. So in the UK, you do not have a right to roam, although that has not stopped GeoWizard. Uh, we pinch each other's ideas sometimes, it's fine. So yeah, let's delve into some fascinating maps and pick them apart, discuss them, take the piss out of them, almost. Starting with Africa. <laughs> this is the literal meaning of every country's name in Africa. Namibia, vast place. Spot on, Chief, spot on. Chief! <laughs> I didn't even see that. Maybe I did. Hang on, some of these are hilarious. Look at these city names in Tanzania. Dodoma, it has sunk. <laughs> that is so African. Bagamoyo, lay down your heart. Likasi, good odours. <laughs> I'm going to be stuck on this one for the whole thing, I think. Land of the milking nomads. <laughs> it sounds like something from a David Firth video. Well, yeah. <laughs> no way, man. Land of the burnt faced. I'm not laughing at what you think I am. There is a David Firth series called Burnt Face Man. It's not about a black person. It's about a superhero who has a burnt face. That, though, is the former. So we'll move on. Um, brilliant names. Again, over here, burnt people. Who named that? Guinea. Really? That's what Guinea means. And just to finish it off, because I've got to move on. Mali means hippo. Who knew? That is so funny. That is what I used to do, man. When I said I was obsessed with maps, I was going to elaborate, but didn't have time. But I would trace. I, I wasn't that good. I wouldn't do it by hand. I would trace countries from an atlas. And then I would go over that. And, and imprint it onto a normal piece of paper and then cut them out. That's how nerdy I was and am. Jesus, we are not gonna have enough time for this, but this is fascinating. A map of the American regional accents and dialects. There's so much going on here with cross hatches and stripes and things to indicate different vowels and things like that. Look at these borders, inland south accent. I would have thought there would be an Appalachian one. Charleston. Down east and outer banks of North Carolina has its own accent apparently. Is that the really British one? And then in here look, this is, these are the ones. New Jersey, Long Island and then the end of Long Island which is where me and Greg were with uh, the guys at Riverhead. Ross definitely will fall into that category. And all of that's different to inland north, east north. I probably couldn't tell the difference, but I am fascinated by, ac uh, by accents. And all these southern speakers here do not have this blue hatching. Wow, that is all you need, isn't it? That is fascinating. That's fascinating. How a coastline a million years ago influences modern election results in Alabama. Cretaceous sediments, fertile soil, big farms for, for plantations, slave population, 1860, black population, 2010, haven't moved. And then, obviously, they're voting differently. That's mad. I never knew this. Percentage of males who are circumcised in each country. USA, 71. Why? That's a big amount. 
But nothing compared to some of these African countries, 99% in Nigeria. I mean, yeah, loads of them. 97 in Congo. A lot of Arabic circumcision. I thought it was just Jewish. Iceland, 0.1. It's cold up there. They need all the layers they can get. Check this out. The real size of countries. This is their actual size. Look how small Russia is. It's very big, you know, it's twice the size of the USA, but it's not as big as you might have thought. Antarctica's massive. Brazil is massive. Norway, Sweden, Finland. Not that big. Hmm. The Earth being centred around Great Britain is arbitrary. So here's the Earth centred around New Zealand. Because why not? That is actually how it would look, is it? Everything's twisted round. God, that's... That's f***ing weird, man. The Pacific Ocean just looks huge there. I just can't get over the way that Russia just bends round like that. Nah, I prefer the British one. US state with the highest percentage of population of ancestry from European countries. That's fascinating. So it's not the biggest population, but rather the highest percentage. So Italians isn't New Jersey or New York, it's Rhode Island. Same for Portugal. Great Britain is Utah. This is ancestry though, ancestry, not actual immigrants. Of course, Sweden is Minnesota, um, Germany, North Dakota, the Poles in Wisconsin, Russians in New York, Bulgarians and Serbians in Illinois, presumably Chicago, and Greeks in Massachusetts. Huh, French people in Maine. The top comment is, why is Moldova a body of water? <laughs> Here's a, a biblical one, which looks really interesting. What happened to the disciples, and it gives you a map of, I'm guessing roughly where they are thought to have died and how they died. And to be honest, not many of these dudes died a happy death. Judas, suicide, Jerusalem. James, stabbed, Jerusalem. Another James, clubbed, Jerusalem. Thomas went right down to the other side of India, the guy I was named after, I've just realised, he was lanced. Matthew was crucified in Cairo. Jude was axed in Galilee. Peter crucified in Rome. Oh, he was the first Pope. Wow. Paul beheaded in Rome. Andrew crucified in Athens. John, ah, John died of old age. A writer in Turkey, modern day Turkey. That's good, that's good. Philip hung Turkey. Bartholomew flayed and beheaded. I don't even know what flayed means. Um, I'm not gonna Google it. That was in Baku, modern day Azerbaijan. And Simon, lastly, crucified in Iran. Wow. Was it worth it, guys? I'm sure they'll say it was. I don't know if Jesus would be uh, too happy with them if they didn't. I'm loving these maps. Sorry. <laughs> How to say the number 92? So 92, 2 and 90, like in German, uh, 92. What's going on with Denmark here? Like, I honestly can't understand this. 2 plus, I can't even say that in English let alone Danish, two plus five minus 0 0.5 times 20. No way, no way do they say that. Can you, Danish people, can you confirm? Five minus, why don't you say 4.5 for that bit? I mean, that's not the extent of my questions, but right, two, we'll ignore that, plus 4.5 times 20. I just can't believe, I don't believe that, genuinely. And the French one's pretty bad too, but nowhere near as bad 
as the Danish one, but four times 20 plus 12. I can forgive that. They're French. I can forgive... I, I wouldn't expect anything else, but the Danish one, you're going to need to confirm that and you need, you're going to need to explain the rationale behind it. I'm not going to buy it, but give it a go. Oh, it's got to be done. Most popular sport in each country. I don't think there'll be any surprises here um, but I just thought I'd click on this because I just want to highlight that football is the greatest sport in the world. America they would say, they would agree they would say that football is the best sport in the world but it's American football and if you just look at that, I hate to break it to you guys but you're on your own there's a lot of you but you're on your own it's not the best sport all of Africa loves football. Cricket is the favoured sport in Afghanistan. Archery in Bhutan. Of course, Aussie rules in Australia. Australia love their sport. There's cricket, there's rugby, there's rugby league, there's soccer, there's all sorts. Wrestling in Mongolia and cricket again in... It's Guyana, isn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. So the country in question is going to be the blue one in each case. And um, the UK is scoring pretty lowly on Germany's wish list of countries to help out. At France is another level, but... Yeah, Germany would not be too keen on helping us out. That's interesting, because this isn't just like who you hate. This is a whole load of factors attached to it, doesn't it? Like what benefits you politics. France would most like to help out Italy and would hate to help out the UK. Um, good to know. Um, United Kingdom would most like to help out Ireland and the least Lithuania. You know, now you mention it, I couldn't give a rat's ass what happens to Lithuania. Just kidding, of course. I, I imagine that that is, I mean, we haven't voted them down. It's just basically we want to help everyone. In the UK, we want to help everyone. Even though we've left the EU, we still want to help everyone. Um, because we didn't vote anyone down. There's no real hatred. Everyone hates us, but we don't really hate anyone else in Europe. Italy's is Germany as well. Same, same percentage as ours. Spain is the UK. I imagine this is post-Brexit. Netherlands is Greece. That's interesting. I imagine that's because of the financial crash and the fact that they're still in the EU uh, we don't want to bail out Greece again Romania is the UK and as for Finland oh my god this is just like pro-EU stuff isn't it yeah everyone loves us really it's nothing to do with the way that we behave when we go on holiday can't be that nah. last one and we'll end it on redheads the frequency of red hair in European countries. That's really cool. Oh my God. That's really, I find this sort of stuff really interesting. Look at that patch over there in Russia. Um, where the, there's a really, it's obviously a tribe of people, a race of people with quite a big proportion of red hair. I don't know if it would be as high as Ireland or Scotland or Wales because it just says over 10%, but it's significant because you go elsewhere in Russia and it's mostly brown, which is 1% to 2%. The same as northern Spain or southern France. It's really interesting, isn't it? How you can, you move further north into Germany, northern Germany, and it goes up to 2 to 4%. I have seen some redheads in Germany, not many. Belgium is more. Kevin De Bruyne. The east of the UK. That's really interesting. The east of the UK, like Norfolk, up to Newcastle, is the same as most of Germany. And that'll be the migration from um, the Anglo-Saxons and the Vikings. It's got to be, hasn't it? And then you move westward and you move northward and you're hitting the, the areas where basically they're ethnically 100% Celtic really or well, not far off um, I'm going to leave it there today 
Um, it, it, as I said earlier, that was something that I've been meaning to do for a while and something that I probably put off because it has been done by another YouTuber, but we're just looking at maps at the end of the day. I don't know if I went over any that Jack went over. If so, I'm sorry, I haven't watched all of his videos. He's done this a few times. Um, hopefully that was pretty organic for you. If you like, I will do this again quite happily. Uh, I could do maps that I find scary, sad, pointless, or any other emotion or descriptive word that you can think of. Yeah, let me know. Do comment on anything that I didn't quite understand or got wrong, which there will be one. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will meet you right back here for your next dose of geography. Take care.